everyone, I'm Chester44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Neverwinter Nights 2, Mysteries of Westgate. Last episode, we arrived in the city of Westgate itself, and it is not the best of places, at least according to where we got in. We've got a rogue on our side already, who was formerly a member of the Night Masks, a group that controls the criminal underworld in here. And, uh, well, we're here because we have to deal with this cursed mask we're currently holding on to. It's just nightmares. Now, let's take a look around here. There's two people to talk to. Let's start with Mantis. Well, <laughs> what have we here, lads? The great Mantis! Not so shiny now, is he? Where's the sword, huh? You <laughs> lost it? Well, maybe you sold it. <laughs> Sold it to pay for more cheap ale than drunken shot. <coughs> How's it feel, eh? How's it feel to be no better than us? Oh, worse than us, creep. Worse than us. We never betrayed no god, did we? Uh, at least, I don't think we did. <coughs> I... You... I never betrayed my god. If you've come to have some sport, you're looking in the wrong place. I won't rise to it. Leave me in peace. <laughs> oh, please, leave me in peace. What's the matter? Did they also take your manhood when they stripped your paladin nest away? Oh, don't hurt me, good sirs. I'm just a poor drunken eunuch and the traitor. <laughs> uh, Screep, I think you made him really mad. It's not a good idea to make him real mad. There's three of us in all, but... Uh, a eunuch? A traitor? I should teach you all a lesson. Beat you within an inch of your worthless lives. Easy there, friend. These men are drunk and speaking nonsense. You're... You're right. These wretches lead miserable enough lives, if this is what passes for their entertainment. There's nothing to gain in sending them home to their wives drunk and battered. Ah, he's a coward. No point wasting our time kicking a wounded dog. Come on, lads. Let's go. <laughs> if you hadn't stepped in, I'd be nursing bruised knuckles by now. Not that the wretches didn't deserve it. I guess I should thank you. Although I'd have enjoyed putting Screeb's head through a table. I am Mantides, formerly paladin and champion of the Morning Lord Lethander. There used to be a time when it hurt to admit that. Now, the only revelation a new day brings is a blinding headache from the night before. It's easier that way. Easier to forget. A former paladin? You fell, some, you fell from grace? Aye, I fell from grace. Plummeted would be more apt. The specific details of which are not something I'm of mind to discuss right now. Maybe when I have a few more ales inside me. Who are you, stranger? My name is Alwith Narakin. Not a name I've heard mention of in Westgate before. You're new to the city, then. I don't recognize you, but I swear that your companion there is familiar, somehow. Have we met? I, um, wouldn't have thought so. I left the city three years ago, just after the Sword Lane business, actually, and haven't been back since. I guess we could have bumped into each other before that, but I don't remember it. The Sword Lane business? Yes, Sword Lane. Eight men and women, all night masks, cut down by a rampaging warrior in the middle of broad daylight. The Watch were still trying to remove the bloodstains when I left the city. Blood on the floor. Blood on my armor. I had it scrapped. Damn shame it was worth a small fortune. I killed them all, butchered them like animals. One of them hadn't even seen his 18th year, but he died like the rest. Did you suddenly have six ales while I was out? <laughs> I thought you didn't want to talk about it. That's why you lost your paladin hood, isn't it? I don't wish to speak of this any further. Perhaps when I get to know you better. Tell me, why are you in Westgate? Uh, let's see. I'm here to investigate a cursed domino mask. That's a night mask symbol. How? No, that's not important. If you wish to find the source of this mask's curse, you will need help. 
The night masks and I have unfinished business. I wish to lend you my sword. I might not be the fighter of old, but few are my equal, even now. I don't think that's a good idea. More people means a smaller share for... You. Now I remember. There were nine, but one escaped. You evaded Dawnbringer time and again, even as the rest fell. It must be you. I remember those eyes. I should run you through here and now. <sighs> I definitely have more work to do on this disguise. Look, Mantides, I'm as much a night mask as you are a paladin. We both left our old professions behind years ago. Besides, I was never involved in... whatever it was that led to your actions. I... You may not have been responsible for what happened, but I cannot be sure. For the moment, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. Just know that I'll be watching you. Shall we leave? Let's get going. Okay... Interesting. Already from the start, our two companions have a connection with each other and have very good reason to be hostile towards each other. Probably much better reason than, truth be told, Kelgar and Nishka had toward each other, where the only reason they were hostile towards each other was because Kelgar was a bit racist and Nishka was tired of racism. Okay, let's take a look at the guy My here. Steel shall lead the way. He is a fighter, straight up fighter, with no deity at the moment. Formerly a paladin of Lathander. I have a feeling his quest is going to be around that. Cleave, great cleave. He's got a great sword specialization, so we gotta get him one of those. And he's currently wielding, let's see, banded mail and a cold iron great sword. Okay. I am certain. Let's try talking to him. Well met. Is there something you wish to discuss? Tell me more about Sword Lane. You won't let this lie, will you? I was sent to Sword Lane on church business, to investigate rumors that a group of night masks were using an abandoned warehouse there as a safe house. The domino masks scrawled on the door confirmed it almost immediately. I could hear voices from within the warehouse. I should have stopped there and reported back to Tylana at Morningstar Haven. I should have. The fire was in my blood and the need for vengeance was too great to resist. There were nine of them, but I was fully armored and my sword cut through three of them while the door was still clattering to the floor. Most were untrained and they offered no real resistance even once their blades were out. I slaughtered them all. All but one. And I guess we should all be grateful for that. You were so preoccupied with sating your rage that it would have been easy enough to slip a dagger in your back. Still, why risk my own hide? I wanted out anyway, from the room and the organization. You did me no favors by staying your hand, Renara. I've come to realize that my actions that day were no better than those of an orc savage down pillaging and murdering from the spine of the world. You should have stopped me. Your questioning does little to lift my spirits, but I can see it's either suffering low spirits in your company or drowning myself in them without. What else did you want to know? What did the Night Masks do to you? They took the one person I cherished more than anything else in this mortal realm. To Shenny, my lover and partner. She was more secure in her faith of her deity, more capable of compromise. I was young and too impetuous. To Shenny was the better half of our partnership, which is why they targeted her instead of me. She defeated one surprise attack, sending her attackers fleeing into the night. I shouldn't have let her out of my sight after that, however capable she was. Alas, our differing faiths meant we could never be with each other all the time. Tosheni was on a mission for the Church of Mialiki when she disappeared. I never found out what was done to her, but it can be none other than the Night Mass who were responsible. It's the not knowing that fueled my rage at Sword Lane. I grieved for her, and my mind wouldn't stop playing ghastly images of what terrible fate my love had endured. Your question, okay. Have you attempted to reclaim your paladinhood? I've thought about starting again, but how? What I did can never be forgiven, Alawith. The Night Masks at Sword Lane were young, and yet to be sullied by evil deeds. One of them was only seventeen. The Thunder could never forgive what I've done. Perhaps, truly, the Thunder was never the god I believed him to be. Why else would he allow such terrible deeds to happen? Why did he not warn me? 
answers are questions I ask myself too often. Drink provides a welcome distraction. Okay, let's go. So I see. His love defeated an attack by Nightmass and then went missing. He went and found Nightmass in a warehouse and slaughtered them all in a fit of rage, believing that Nightmass had basically killed her. He had no evidence otherwise, and I see now why he basically went and killed them. Or why he fell, I mean. Okay. Well, let's keep looking around. We got one other person we can talk to here, Captain Merrick. Oh, excellent! Another lubber come to hear me tales of wit. Well, grab a mug and pull up a chair, but shut your trap in any case. I'm just coming to the good part. So, I was beating him hard about, and he says to me, Oi, stop, Captain! I'll give him up! The one who did it was one of me mates with a wooden leg named Farva. And you know what I did? You know what I did? Well, I'll tell ye dogs I will. <laughs> I gave him a quick bag in the face and said, That don't mean nothing to me, you scurvy knave. What's the name of his other leg? <laughs> ha! I had ye uh, lot going, I did, ye dirty wags. <laughs> Right then, lubber, you're stealing me light, and you don't look to be giving it back any time soon. What can Captain Merrig do for ye today? Captain, what sort of business are you in? Well, if you're with the town guards, I'm a pirate hunter. If you're not, then I'm into anything that's, shall we say, lucrative. You... Didn't even check to see if I was in the town guard before admitting that. Aye, that's true. I guess that either means I'm stupid, or I just ain't too worried about the guard. I'll go with stupid. Now, I hate to be ungentlemanly and all that, but I notice you're still here. There's something to all this? I'm sorry for disturbing you. Farewell, Mr. Spitty McGee. All right, uh, Marv here. Said we could talk to him about the dancer, so why not? Behave yourself and there won't be any trouble. I wanted to talk to you about Dimples. Sorry, pal, but Dimples ain't dancing here no more. You'll have to get your jollies elsewhere, at least wise, until she comes back or we find another dancer. I'm not here to watch her. I'm here to help you look and find her. Really? What are you, some kind of adventurer? So it's like I'm sending you on a quest. The quest to find Dimples the Dancer! <laughs> Just like in the storybooks. Yes, but I need more information if I'm going to go on this quest. I'd just like to know what happened to her, to tell the truth. I always figured she'd quit eventually. She was too classy for this place. I just wish she would have said something before she left. Makes me worry about her. Little Davy said she just stopped showing up for work one night. Yeah, that was queer. She'd never been late before, and all of a sudden, she stops showing up. Makes my stomach run sour just thinking about it. You know, people just disappear in the dock sometimes. Could be pirates take them away as slaves, or maybe they get eaten up by the Quelzone. Worst part is not knowing what happened. When did you last see her? Oh, it was a ten day ago. She took her usual shift, dancing here at the Black Eye. Nothing peculiar at all. I offered to walk her home that night like I always did, and she turned me down like she always did. Just this once, I wish she would have taken me up on my offer. Dang, Dimples was always so private. None of us even knew where she lived. Just she didn't want customers finding out. What does Dimples look like? Ah, oh, she's got a tall, athletic build. Not like none of those soft dancers you see jiggling themselves all around. Real pretty face, too. Long brown hair, shiny as anything you've ever seen. And Dimples? Yeah, then, now that you mention it, she did have real pretty Dimples on her cheeks. Oh, hey, I guess that's how she got her name, huh? Alright, that's enough information about Dimples. If you see her around, tell her we want her back, would you? Or at least let me know what happened to her. I can't take not knowing. Noted. Uh, it doesn't really have any other information, so I guess... Time come, we start moving out. Yeah, we're taking that party.
I don't know how many other companions we'll be getting, but we'll see. Alright, that's the end done. Well, we can take a look in the left. There are a couple of houses we can investigate. Quite a few, actually. Arg and ahoy, scurvy dog! Give the look of a newcomer you do. I can practically smell the wet behind your ears. Well, if ye be intending to spend any measure of time on this ship, matey, ye'd better listen and listen good. Old Jack, he just he just wanting to give ye a bit of advice. Tis best to watch your back aboard the Westgate. Not all the crew about this fine vessel be honest folk. Did I just hear you refer to Westgate as a ship? Aye, and a fine vessel she do be. Why, I've captained this ship for as long as I can remember. We've braved storms and squalls and squids and squirrels and all manners of frightful creatures from beyond your wildest dreams. Arg, and if it hadn't been for my good friend Quark's help, we would all be long dead. He gestures with a nod of his head at a location several feet away. Quark's got a sixth sense, he does. He can listen to the wind and foresee storms, and sometimes when the mood is right, he can even juggle. I'm sorry, but... Who are you talking about? Why, Quog, of course! Be ye blind, matey! He be right there, right in front of your nose! You almost stepped on him when you first arrived! He points toward the ground at his feet. Seemingly his own shadow. Are you... talking about your shadow? My what? Tis Quog you're pointing at! And it is rude to point to your dog! He jabs a gnarled finger at you in your direction ac accusingly. My apologies. Oh, I ye better apologize for old Quog here. He'll rip ye to shreds or eat ye, or worse. Salty Jack demonstrates by gnawing animatedly on his own scrawny arm. Okay, is there anything useful you can tell me besides that I should watch my back in Westgate? I watch your front, too. Salty Jack bursts into wheezing laughter, slapping both knees vigorously and shaking his head. He's obviously quite pleased with himself. Old man, I'm serious. I'm interested in hearing if you know anything of a group called the Ebon Claws. I know the rats of which you speak. There do be a nasty smell coming from one of the sewage grates in the west of the loop. So foul that even Quog flinches when he sniffs it. it smells like rats. Rats and poop. Poop in the loop! Ah, it rhymes, it does. Oh, Salty, make a rhyme! Thank you, Jack. That tip may prove useful. Oh, call me Salty. That's what all me friends call me. Which friends would those be? Oh, I've got plenty of friends. There's Quog, of course. That makes one. Then there's a the bartender at the Black Eye. He and I go way back. That makes two. Oh, then there's the bartender at the Bent Mermaid. That makes... Uh... uh okay, thanks for the information, Salty. Oh, aye, aye. Any time. Oh, uh, say, wait a moment. You wouldn't happen to have a spare coin or two, would you? I'm running a bit low in the spare change department of late. Where it's been a bit slow. You have a job. Why, of course I have a job. I even got me a title I does. Everyone calls me Vagrant, they do. Vagrant Salty Jack, I do be. He puffs out his chest proudly, visibly swelling with pride. I'll keep that in mind, Salty. So, do ye have a spare coin? Or two? Or, uh, more than two? Sure, here's a gold piece, Salty. Aye, you're kind, so kind, thank you, matey. Uh, you wouldn't happen to be able to spare any more, would you? Inflation and all that makes it hard to get by, even for a vagrant. Sure, I got a bit to spare. All right, sorry, Salty, can't help you. Eh, uh, you sure? I could really use a hand, matey. Quog here's got a stomach bug that he needs tending to, but I ain't got the coin to see a cleric. Sorry, I really can't help you. Ah, but, uh, but it's been rather cold lately, and I've been thinking I could really be using a new set of rags. Wouldn't want to be freezing, sky. No, Salty, I really can't spare any gold at this point. Of course, of course. Salty understands, he does. The adventure types are all the same, he are. Huh. I couldn't do that if you offered me all the gold in Westgate. It's impossible. Okay, I'm guessing not all of these doors can be unlocked. Oh, wait, Renara can give this one a try. Absolutely.
Nope. Specific key. I have a feeling most of these it? doors can't be opened. Well, let's keep looking around. Statue of King Verovan. The statue of King Verovan is the victim of time and vandalism. Its missing head and the obscene graffiti chiseled into its surface attest to the popularity of Westgate's last king. Read the inscription. May the statue stand eternally in honor of our great and rightful ruler, King Verovan of the Eorn Lorndesar dynasty. Let all who pass before our grace's image revere it as they would the king himself. Absolutely. Pretty sure none of them revere that king. Nope. I am going to check every door. I am certain. Narrow alley. I don't know if we can get in there. The twisting maze of alleys is home to the poorest and most wretched of Westgate's underclass. You have no reason to want to enter this place. Yeah, I didn't think so. Absolutely. Can you unlock this door or no? I have a feeling the answer will be no. Follow me. Yep, the now. answer is no. There's a couple doors here and not much else. If you need something looted, I'm your woman. Okay, I'm sorry. I know she said looted, but for some reason my mind heard it as looted. Oh, boy. This heavy wooden door is covered with long scratches and a splattering of dark red stains. Oh, that's concerning. What about this one? Absolutely. Let me guess. Can't unlock this one either. I am certain. Nope. Okay. I'm guessing there's not going to be anything over here. Nope. All right. There wasn't really anything on this side. Do you see the sewer grade? Ah, we should probably make our way towards the harbor master's office. That might be a good place to check. And of course, check every single door. Let me guess, this one we can't open? Nope. Specific key. Same with this one, I bet. This one just leads to an alleyway. Nope, can't go in there. What is it? Excuse me, could you tell me how I might find Morningstar Haven? What do you want with that place, woman? They probably won't even let you in wearing those rags of yours. If I'm wearing rags, it's only because of you, murderer. What in the hells are you talking about, woman? I thought you looked like the Lady of Shivs, but I had to see you up close and hear your voice to be sure. You're the one who killed Danton and condemned me to a life of poverty in the process, you... You witch! How can you be sure this is the so-called Lady of Shivs? Well, I guess I can't be sure. The voice sounds the same, and she sure looks like the Lady of Shivs from a distance. Still, maybe I was wrong. Sometimes I just want to find her so bad to get back at her for what she did. Maybe you should ask yourself how your husband came into contact with such an evil character. Maybe he wasn't such a good guy himself. Uh oh I never said he was a good guy. But he was mine, and the money he brought in kept me clothed and fed. All that's gone now, thanks to the Lady of Shivs. Hmm. So you're the Lady of Shivs, are you? Noted. I guess I'd need to check even the blue... Even the people who are blue here. <sighs> Not just the green ones. Alright, let's move up this way. Commoners, dock workers, sailors, commoner. A rabid dog over there! I guess we can investigate, although since none of us are druids, I'm gonna guess nothing is really gonna happen to this. There's something wrong with this dog. Foam lines its mouth and its eyes are bloodshot and opened wide. It snarls menacingly at your approach, revealing blood-stained teeth. 
attempt to calm the animal. The dog narrows its eyes to red slits and growls threateningly. Your attempt to calm it seems to have backfired. I'm guessing we don't we can't really do it. Slowly back away. The dog snarls again but does not follow you. Okay. Well, we have the Dog Master's office here. And you know what? I think we'll go into here in the next episode, because this one's gone on about long enough. Interesting seeing this place, while we seem to already have a path to get to, uh, what they're called, the Ebon Claws, I'm not sure if I really want to join them. I think I'd much rather join the Temple of Lathander and do the good side of this, because I'm pretty sure that's how it's divided. But we'll investigate things in the next episode, because this one's gone on long enough. So, until then, I am Chester44, that is Alawith Narakand, Rinara, and Mantids. This has been a Let's Play of a Neverwinter Nights 2 Mysteries of Westgate, and I shall see you all next time.